Welcome to the third session on Tocharian morphology. In this part, we'll be looking at uh, inflection, uh, both in the nominal uh, system and in the verbal uh, system. Uh, we'll deal with Tocharian uh, declension and nominal classes, and then also have a brief look at the conjugation and the verbal classes of Tocharian. So let's start here. The main feature of uh, Tocharian declension is a two-level case uh, system, uh, which gives to carry in a certain uh, agglutinative uh, feel. Um, the primary cases are nominative, vocative, genitive, and accusative. And the accusative also functions as the oblique stem on which the secondary cases are built. The secondary cases shared by both uh, languages are the so-called perlative, the commutative, the allative, the ablative and uh, the locative. Additionally, to carry an A and only to carry an A has an instrumental and to carry an B a so-called causal. For uh, the functions of these uh, cases, I refer you to uh, my colleague Jert Karling, um, who will uh, teach you about that in her session on morphosyntax of to carry an. So let's have a look how the two-level case system works in Tukherin. Um, this passage uh, here again is from the Aranemi uh, Chataka, and I will read it to you. Tumen Chandramuken lantish veshin orochub valo senish arenimi valo nesau. Thereupon he said to the king Chandramuka, great king, this is me, I am king Aranemi. Um, here um, we have uh, the vocative or nominative, uh, which is the same um, of a king, and the um, accusative um, or the oblique stem of this is actually in here, um, uh, so land. And uh, uh, here we have attached the allative case suffix ish uh, to the oblique stem. So you see uh, valo land. So nominative singular, accusative uh, singular, and then built on the accusative, uh, the oblique stem, uh, the secondary cases like the allative attach. Now let's turn uh, to the different stem classes of Tocharian. So traditionally inflectional uh, classes of substantives in Tocharian are distinguished based on the plural. Um, there are two main uh, classes. Um, neuter, sometimes also called uh, alternants, um, because they basically um, uh, alternate uh, between masculine uh, in the singular and feminine in the plural. Um, so this class um, is characterized uh, by that the nominative uh, is exactly uh, like the uh, accusative in the plural, and uh, it ends into carrying B, uh, R, and into carrying A, either uh, zero or long R, and these are classes one, two, three, as we will see in a minute. And then the second major class are uh, the non-neuter class, um, with an accusative uh, usually in uh, to carry B, N, uh, and to carry in A, uh, S, uh, with uh, nominative to carry in B and to carry in A in I, uh, near or zero, and these are classes four to seven. Okay, um, this here is a structural overview of the seven noun classes in to carry in B. So if we look here, um, class one is the A class with unmarked endings in the nominative and accusative singular and plain A in nominative and accusative plural. Class two is the Na or Nma, uh, there are two different subclasses with either unmarked uh, or vowel endings in the singular and vowel plus Na or Nma endings in the plural. Class three here is the enter class, having no endings in the singular and uh, vowel inter endings in the plural. So this is where the neuter, uh, these are the neuter stem classes. 
uh, before we turn to the non NUDA classes, note that as a universal feature, at least of only in the European languages, there is no distinction between nominative and accusative in the NUDA. This is true for every Indo European language that has or in some way continues a NUDA, uh, and this is also true um, for Tocharian. So now uh, let's turn to the non NUDA classes. Class 4 is the R class, largely consisting of the old inherited Indo European kinship, kinship terms. Um, this class has uh, an R with palatalization uh, of the stem in the nominative singular and an U in the accusative singular. And in the plural, we find variation of nominative accusative ERA with palatalization of the stem and nominative accusative RIN without palatalization of the stem. We'll see a couple of examples in a minute, so don't get uh, too annoyed here. Class 5. Uh, this is the I class, which in the nominative accusative singular either ends in zero or a vowel. Marking of the accusative singular uh, is with N. Only in a subset of these nouns um, uh, that denote a rational being. So that's a special class uh, in, in Tocharian. The plural of this class is either uh, in I, both with or without uh, stem palatalization. So there again is a subset here. And uh, the accusative plural is uniformly in vowel plus N. Moving on to class 6 here. And we're almost done. Class 6 is the N class. Um, that in the nominative singular ends in vowels and in the accusative in uh, vowels or I. And this class has a vowel N uh, in the nominative plural and a vowel N, uh, so uh, without palatalization, in the accusative plural. And now finally uh, we turn to class 7 and this is the NT class. Here we find O or AU in the nominative singular uh, and uh, uh, NT. Uh, in the accusative singular. In the plural of this class, we have in the nominative singular nch and uh, ntum in the accusative plural. Um, to add some bone to the skeleton, we now uh, turn to the next slide where we actually see uh, real words. So have a look. Um, first class represented by pikul, year, uh, and we have the plural pikwala. Uh, 2a, this is the na class, represented by niem, uh, name, plural nemnya. Um, to B class, the nima uh, class represented by chok uh, lamp, uh, chokanma in the plural. Uh, the NT class here represented by yarke, veneration, and we have uh, the plural yurkenta. The R class, remember that's the uh, kinship term class uh, in R, uh, macher, uh, mother, and the plural machera. The E class, number five, uh, we have yakwe, that's the horse word uh, inherited from Indo European, and we have the plural yakwi. And then oxo, ox, uh, and plural oxine. And uh, finally, our uh, friend the king uh, that we already had, so valo, oblique singular uh, land, uh, and we have the plural lanch, and um, in the accusative lantun. Um, here now is a structural overview of um, the STEM classes in Tocharian A um, that I let you digest for a moment. Uh, so I will not go over them uh, like I did with Tocharian B. Let's just move them on uh, to a couple of examples. And here are our examples. And as you uh, can see, some of them are actually uh, cognate uh, with uh, Tocharian B. Uh, again, we have a word for year, uh, pukul, uh, in class 1. Then uh, class 1B, that's a special class of Tocharian A, uh, where we have washed, uh, house, with the plural washtu. Then uh, the na class is represented by por, uh, plural porin, uh, fire actually related to our word for fire in uh, the Germanic languages. Then in class uh, three, the NT class, we have Jürg, uh, plural uh, Jürkant. The 3B class, uh, we have Wür, uh, water, 
uh, nominative plural uh, and accusative plural uh, vruntu. And again, uh, this water word is related to our water word in the Germanic languages. Then four, again, the r uh, class, the kinship terms, uh, again, the word for mother, machar, and plural machri. Uh, five, the e class, we have tekan, the word for earth, plural tekanyi. Six, the n class, uh, nyukut, the word for god, plural nyuktanyi. And class seven, again, our friend the king, uh, nominative singular vul. Accusative singular or oblique stem land and then plural uh, lunch and lunches. Now let's turn to adjectives. Adjectives in Tocharian B uh, in principle have three different stems masculine, uh, feminine uh, singular, and feminine uh, plural. So they're all uh, distinct. And uh, like in the substantive, the inflectional classes are traditionally distinguished based on the plural. So here is a structural overview uh, again of the four uh, Tocharian B adjective classes. We're only dealing uh, with Tocharian B here because the adjectival stem classes in Tocharian uh, still have to be figured out. Um, and the four Tocharian B adjective classes here uh, can be further subdivided, uh, which is not uh, very important for us at the moment. Um, but the basic difference between these classes concerns their plurals, both uh, masculine and feminine. And at the next uh, slide, the classes are illustrated with a couple of example words. Okay, so uh, the first class here is represented by the she adjectives. We already saw them uh, in the session on uh, derivational morphology. And here again, we have the word orashe, woody of wood. Um, with its uh, different uh, stem uh, classes. Um, important to note are uh, accusative plural in N uh, and then uh, the nominative accusative plural of the feminine uh, in Ana. So Orasche, uh, Orashi, Orashen, Orasche, Orashe, Orashana, Woody. Uh, class two is represented here by Orkamo, uh, which means dark. Um, and uh, let's take some important uh, cases. So uh, nominative plural monje, um, nominative uh, uh, singular feminine mnya, uh, accusative singular feminine mnyai, and nominative accusative uh, plural feminine mnyana. Class three is an NT class, uh, and here we have uh, perneu, uh, which means worthy. Um, here, the interesting thing is that we have a palatalized nominative plural. So you see uh, perne, uh, perneo, uh, nominative singular, accusative is pernent, and the nominative plural is pernench with palatalization, and accusative plural masculine uh, is pernentun without palatalization. And in the feminine, uh, these uh, NT stems uh, have enza, uh, ence, uh, and enta. And our uh, fourth class are the preterite participles. We already saw yamu dan in uh, our session on the stress uh, in phonology. Um, and we have yamu, uh, yamosh, yamosh, yamoshun, and in the feminine, yamusa, yamusa, yamuva. Um, and these are our principal adjective classes in Tocharian. B. Let's briefly turn to the verbal system. Um, Tocharian has four verb stems, uh, the present, the subjunctive, the preterite, and the imperative stem. These can be further subdivided into different morphological classes that are mainly distinguished by different uh, stem vowels and uh, um, different suffixes that are attached uh, to these stems. In contrast to the nominal system, upload is actually frequently attested in the verbal system. Um, infixation and reduplication that are kind of prominent in, uh, for example, Homeric Greek or Vedic Sanskrit uh, are rarer in Tocharian. 
So here's an overview of the four uh, different verbal stems with their different stem classes. Um, there's actually no other Indo-European language uh, exhibiting such a rich uh, system of stem classes. Um, and for convenience sake, uh, we'll only go over the present and the preterite classes uh, and skip the subjunctive classes because it's very similar to the present and skip the imperative uh, for now. Um, and uh, let's look at the present. So our first class um, has root up loud and is athematic. Our second class are the thematic presents. The third class also has root up loud, at least in some cases, and is characterized by uh, special suffixes uh, a and a um, for to carry in b a for to carry in uh, a a. Then the fourth class uh, has no root up loud and has uh, the special um, suffixes uh, to carry in b o to carry in a a. The fifth class has root up loud and a suffix a. The uh, sixth class has a suffix na. The seventh class is one place where we actually have infixation and these are nasal infix presents uh, that we also know and love from other Indo-European languages. Class eight is an uh, S present, it has a uh, root up loud and it is also thematic. Class nine um, in Tocharian B is uh, the SK class and uh, is thematic. Uh, class 10 uh, is the NASK or NUSK uh, or to carry an A uh, NAS or NUSK class and is also thematic. Class 11 is the SAS or SUSK or to carry an A SIS class and they're also thematic in both uh, to carry in languages. And finally our uh, 12th class uh, partially uh, in a couple of verbs has root up loud, uh, has the suffix uh, nn, so near uh, palatalized n, um, and is also thematic. And if we take a quick look at our uh, preterite classes, uh, class 1 uh, has uh, root up loud and is athematic, then class 2 uh, is the place where we find reduplication uh, in the Tocharian verbal system. And also uh, the uh, reduplication is also attested in the participles of these preterites. Then class three has root up loud and uh, an S suffix. Um, preterite class four has uh, shushu um, as suffix. Preterite class five has new new as suffix. And preterite class uh, six is a thematic preterite class. The different verb classes uh, combine uh, to form valency paradigms. So, for example, uh, intransitive present uh, four uh, has a transitive equivalent in uh, present nine. The first example here uh, is again from the Supriya Nataka, and here we have the intransitive present class four of the root kras, which means to be angry. Um, so let's uh, look at this example here. So we have Schuketze zu Krosotür. Um, this sweet one, Schuketze, is not angry. Krosotür. The second example um, of present nine is uh, once more taken from the Karmavibanga. And here we find the causative present uh, nine to the same root Kras, uh, meaning uh, now transitive, make angry. So we have Yoko krasushin shek, thirst vexes him continually. So this is just one combination of how different stems of the same root play a role in valency changes, and you will hear more about that by Yard Kaling. Uh, and this interaction of different verbal stems in a sophisticated system is quite special and makes the Tukarian verbal system really fun to learn uh, and to do research on. So thank you very much for your attention and I now pass on the baton to my colleague uh, Yad Kaling who will uh, give lessons on the morphosyntax of Tukarian.